Hi everybody, here's our daily meditation for Wednesday the 8th of April. We're again looking today at some of the sayings of Jesus on the cross. And the one I've chosen is one of the most emotive and perhaps in some ways troubling. Interestingly, it's the only one of the sayings that appears in more than one of the accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. And furthermore, it's also an Aramaic tins quotation from the Old Testament, from Psalm 22. I'm going to quote it here from Mark's account, chapter 15 and verse 34. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Contemplating these words truly puts us on holy ground. We can only wonder at the full depth of meaning, emotion and anguish that is experienced here. We can only marvel that Jesus, at his lowest ebb, instinctively breathes out God's word. And from the psalm, he borrows the words that express the anguish, now not only of his body, but also of his soul. John Calvin, in his Institutes, described this outpouring by stating that Jesus carried in his soul the terrible torments of a condemned and lost man. These words are truly instructive, but there's also a caution for us. For whatever we think is depicted by these words, there are some things they cannot mean. The forsakenness which Jesus professes cannot mean, for example, that the eternal communion between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit was broken. The Trinity is not disrupted here. God could not and cannot cease to be triune. Neither could it mean that the Father ceased to love the Son, particularly not here and especially not now at the point at which the Father's own mandate was being fulfilled as the Son's mission reaches its salvific climax. Nor again could it mean that the Holy Spirit had ceased to minister to the Son. His relationship with him was eternal as the Son of God, and in terms of his humanity, he had come down upon him at his baptism, not merely for one fleeting moment to indicate his messianic significance, but to remain on him. And he would, as the book of Hebrews states, be there to the last as the eternal spirit through whom the Son offered himself to God. But for all these caveats, there is true distress here. Jesus experiences our sins being laid upon him and he bears the punishment for them. Christ stands where none have stood before or since, enduring at one tiny point in space and time all that our sins deserved. As someone so aptly put it, he endured the curse in unmitigated concentration. Wonderfully, we know that he did so, that we might never know that same forsakenness or utter those same words from Psalm 22, but rather that we can experience God's outrageous grace and rest forever in the knowledge that he will never leave us or forsake us. Amen.